to hear than this. I just dropped the idle as you can hear. Okay. See like lots of nice fire coming out of there. Let's get it from this side, you can probably see it better. There you go. Look at that. That's showing you there, you can see the flames coming out. What you're seeing there is unburned fuel. You see? And that's the reason why turbos work. Because you can see there's loads of unburned fuel coming out of there. And that's still expanding as it comes out. And so that makes the turbo work efficient. It begins it more efficient because you're using that. Okay. So, power temperature is 62 degrees. Now that went up to 65, and then I dropped the idle slightly, and it dropped down to 62 degrees. So that could quite happily carry on idling like that, and it wouldn't damage the engine. There's no need for it to idle any... Oh, it's just got... It's kind of flicking between 60... It's not 62.5, obviously. Alright, this is centigrade. Just so you can see, I'm actually measuring it. The temperature itself. Oh, let's get that better in. Okay. Measuring it under the base of the cylinder head, which is usually the hottest point where the cylinder joins, the cylinder head joins the body. Okay. Oh, it's 80 degrees. Oh yeah. So I moved it slightly and it's obviously measuring it more. It's just gone up to where it's got just three. Basically, it's just got a better uh, temperature point. See, it's now gone up to 87. Right, so I'm going to cut it out because I don't want it to go up to 90. So we'll stop it there. There we go. <coughs> I've got my fan going there to extract the air from the uh, workshop so we all don't die of carbon monoxide poisoning. Well, me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's actually 90. Okay, so a bit of a miscalculating there. But what it is is that the sensor I've got, it's kind of got embedded into the claw, <laughs> which I ha I'm happy about because it makes it easier. But then there's an insulating bit between there and the claw. So that's caused it basically to maybe sometimes get a bit of a wrong calculation. Yeah. Let's put it back on there. Let's get it right in so we can get the right temperature. Okay, if I actually feel it myself, I can feel, oh yeah, that's hot to the touch. So that's going to be climbing, it's about right at 90 I would say. But it still doesn't damage the engine because you've got to forget, you don't forget but this is an air-cooled engine. The reason why you can't let it go, a normal engine, go up to 100 degrees or something is because it will boil the water away, which means then it's got no cooling whatsoever, you see. Now, because this is an air-cooled engine, there's no water to boil away. This is the reason why air-cooled engines are more rust. That can go up to two, 300 degrees, and it'll still operate, and it'll still cool, you see. So there's no kind of tipping point at 100 degrees where you start boiling your coolant away because there's no coolant to boil away. So, even though, <coughs> even though it's dropped a bit now, 86, 8, you know, even though the temperature of the engine is 90 degrees, it's not destructive, you see. I mean, I don't know how well it'll run at 200 degrees, <laughs> but it certainly would not destroy the engine. It just might, you know, due to thermal expansion, things might not work as you want them to. You might find that there's a lack of compression because there's the cylinder walls have expanded beyond the rings and allowed a compression to go through or something like that but it won't damage the engine the next one the the next problem is is to be able to run the engine uh, and it'll run it without oil because obviously it'll get to the point where the oil itself will start evaporating but I think that actually genuinely happens at like four or five hundred degrees so it'd have to get up to that sort of temperature before it started evaporating the oil so it works and it will carry on working and that's the reason why I picked an air-cooled engine you see because they are genuinely more robust they're just a bit more complicated you have to make it with all the veins and uh, yeah anyway so we're going to be connecting it to that what we're going to do is fashion a plate <coughs> which goes either on the oil on the oil end or on this end and uh, we're going to be fashioning it into uh, into this. Okay, we're going to use that collar there. We're basically going to drill through the, the middle section there so that it'll have a, a, a peg and then we'll attach that uh, to the shaft that normally goes through. We'll put it in the other way up and have it coming out this way. Sorry, I'm not even showing you, am I? So normally the shaft goes through there and comes out at the bottom but we'll invert it and actually have it coming up and then we coming upwards and then we'll have to you know we'll have the shaft coming up like that and the, drill another hole through it there you see 
and uh, probably attach it through a bit of box onto uh, a plate on the flywheel and then that will give us a, a kind of bodged connection but at least it will turn it and we can work out what it's going to do we can fashion something a little bit more permanent later but that at least will turn the generator and we can get some tests done then you know as in fuel conversion to electricity tests and output power tests and stuff like that wow 94 degrees so uh, yeah but as well as that today I'm going to uh, create a Linux version of the brushless motor on a PC because I've got uh, a customer who wants uh, me to write device drivers so I'm going to brush up on that by doing it yeah but you know obviously now it's a lot more lot smaller it's a diet it's been on a diet because it's got rid of all of this uh, obviously there's a, a nice uh, toroidal compressor there because that's what it is and uh, the generator which is down there which is an alternator you can also use that as a motor so I can reassemble that turn the alternator into a motor and I've actually got a powered uh, toroidal fan which would be nice and it all in, it's all separate and independent you don't need the engine chassis the engine casing to mount all that together or you might need to block it where it actually attaches to the engine <coughs> but you know obviously much slimmer now isn't it with all that mi all that missing and it, obviously I'll need cooling of some sort because it's going to be stationary but I can do the cooling just simply by basically that garden blower down there right <laughs> if I really need it so I can use this because obviously we've got a nice amount of power coming out of there which is plenty to cool the engine and because we've got a generator <laughs> we can power that so I mean I don't know if it needs it all but we, need, we can use that as a temporary measure just to give us the, uh, the cooling that we need and there you go. The beast runs quite happily. 91 degrees. 